Okay, so here we go. Stuff that I drafted on Friday night. Because I can. Uh, it was kind of interesting. Um, one of the few times that we had uh, we had our traditional draft going on, plus a sanctioned draft. Um, more people stayed with our traditional draft because it's cheaper. Um, you know, you go if you play in the sanctioned draft, you're paying extra for, for prize support. You know, um, for a lot of us, we prefer to just you know pay nine bucks for a booster draft and redraft rares for prizes. You know. You know, in our traditional way, of course, all of your rares and foils go into a common prize pool, but you get to claim dibs on one of your cards. That's your keeper, and the rest go in, you know? At least the rest of your foils and rares. <coughs> so if you're going to go, uh, if the expression goes rare whoring, that is, drafting a butt-ton of rares, better make them rares that are good for your deck. Or at the very least, rares that you don't want to pass to other people. Because there are cards you just don't pass. So, um, first draft, bunch of people we had, I want to say it was like two tables of six, two tables of seven, I can't remember. But we had a fair amount of people, and, uh, I kind of surprised myself with this little deck. Um, it's playing, uh, black red. My, uh, black consisted of a Dusk Hunter Bat, uh, Blood Rage Vampire, Uh, Warpath Ghoul. Two Grave Diggers. Those are nice. A uh, pair of Tormented Souls. Those are also nice. Uh, a Consume Spirit. Um, hold on a second. Let me put this down for a sec. Um, ah, it's not in here. So. That's right, I think I gave that away, or I moved it. So I moved it. I moved it. Uh, so what did I pull out? Um. So what the heck was it in here? Then? Uh, probably one of these distresses, I'm thinking. Yeah, I had a, um, the Swift Foot Boot, foot, Swift Foot, Swift Foot Boots in there. I pulled it to throw into an e my EDH deck. Whatever. So I didn't have distresses in there. I'm glad I was going to say I didn't think I was playing those. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Tectonic Rift. It was mostly in there to make all my dudes unblockable for one turn. Swing for the kill. Blah, blah, blah. Manic Vandal. He's okay. Pair of Goblin Tunnelers. Mostly, uh, eh. They're all right. You know, if nothing else, they're filler. If nothing else. Goblin Fire Slinger. I had like three cards in the deck with uh, Bloodthirst, so he's got a purpose. Volcanic Dragon. Always nice. Fiery Hellhound. Works nice with the Goblin Tunnelers. Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah, that was my keeper. Fireball. You just don't pass those, you know. Fling. Blood Ogre. Incinerate. And a Bone Breaker Giant is a nice little piece of beef. The Bone Breaker Giant actually came up recently on uh, the message boards. People are asking, it's like, oh, how do you rate the Bone Breaker Giant draft? And, you know, on a scale of 1 to 5, with uh, 5 being the best and, like, a 2 being a, uh, you know, an acceptable filler card and a 2.5 being a solid filler card, I ranked him around a 2.25. Because, you know, that's where pretty much yeah, he is, you know? There's another Bone Breaker, uh, another Tunneler, a Slaughter Cry. Slaughter Cry isn't necessarily bad, but I don't really like it. Um, usually, I believe that there's better stuff you can put into a card slot. Amp and Cutthroat and a Monoleak, for the most part, comprised by Blue. Mm, pardon. Uh, Greater Basilisk and an Acidic Slime, by Green. My white, I have a Siege Mastodon, Stonehorn Dignitary, Angel's Mercy. Why do they print that? I swear. Alabaster Mage and a Pacifism. Okay, those are good white cards. Unfortunately, with only two white cards that are really playable, you can't justify it. You really can't. Which is a shame, because those are both really solid cards. 
Manic Vandal, a couple Hideous Visages, and a Disentomb. I didn't need the Disentomb, I had a pair of, uh, <coughs> Fudge it's nuts. Uh, a pair of Grave Diggers. You know what's really nice is when you have, when you're just playing Grave Digger, and your opponent swings into it, and you block with the Grave Digger, Grave Digger goes to the graveyard, it's like, okay, my turn, and they're like, yep, go. I play Grave Digger, I get Grave Digger back to my hand. When you've got the Grave Digger do -si do in and out of the graveyard going, the people just sit there and look at it and like, you're kidding me, really? That's hard to beat. Um, I ended up taking first place. I got four picks out of the prize pool for first place before anyone else touched it. I ended up taking the uh, four of the uh, non-basic lands. The comes into play tapped unless you have a sympathetic land land. Can't call those dual lands. Then later I pick up picked up the uh, Sphinx of uh, Factor Fiction when picks came back around to me. It was all right. I'm, I kicked myself a little bit because I forgot. I, I was got so overwhelmed by the general ho humness of the prize pool that I totally overlooked the grim lava mancer that was in the prize pool. Um, I think partially I overlooked it because I already had one from as a keeper from the draft. Oh well. Second draft didn't do nearly as good, but. Uh, Lord of the Unreal is my keeper. And, uh... Herc. Couple of cancels. A mono leak. That's not bad control. I've drafted better... Well, better counter magic control and draft than that before. Um... What was really nice was uh, getting a... Uh, a pair of Gideon's Law Keepers and three pacifisms. That was nice. I had a. Uh, let's say I had two of them in there? Or was it just. Oh, there's the other one. It's hiding underneath other stuff. Had a pair of Assault Griffins. I don't. I actually pulled some blue cards out to make room for them. I can't remember what I pulled out, but I pulled cards out to make room for them because I came to the conclusion my deck was kind of light on decent bodies. Swift foot boots, always nice. Uh, also had a pair of ice cages, which came in really useful more often than you would have thought. Really useful. A uh, pair of divinations. <coughs> great sword, also a nice card. A uh, great sword, if nothing else, is really nice to break arachnus webs. You know, pro tip there, guys, you know. Oh, they put an arachnus web on your 1-1 one, one dude who has a utility function. Just throw the sword on him. Oh, look, he's plus 3 plus, oh, he's now got a power of 4. Arachnus web does not stick. Uh, Merfolk looter. Now, uh, you see the Lord of the Unreal. I also had two phantasmal bears and two phantasmal dragons. Um, when I could get the Lord and, you know, the phantas the illusions on board all at once, it was awesome. You couldn't stop that. Um, unfortunately, what really hurt me bad, hurt me bad, was uh, my uh, first round opponent in the second draft was basically playing um, targeted effects dot deck. I'm just sitting there like, really, guy? Really? No, really? Um, that, of course, you know, was getting late. We were both tired, and he's a good guy, and so it's just like, <clears throat> game two, he drops Fireball, and all I've got on the board is like one Phantasmal Dragon and two Phantasmal Bears. And he just, he starts tapping lands, he puts down the Fireball, and he's trying to do his math. And I decide, you know what, I'm going to help him out with this, because you know he's a good guy, he's a good player, but for some strange reason, he has mental hiccups on some cards. I don't know why, he just does. So I helped him out with the math on it, because, you know, the second he dropped the fireball, I knew that even if he, like, funched it up, he had me. He just plain had me right there. Because he just wiped my creature base. It's like, wait, wait, I mean, I had three creatures on the board, and he had one creature, and he had a creature that had an ice cage on it. So it's like, yeah, um, red, pay three mana for three extra targets, 
Um, X is zero. But they're all targeted. Dead, dead, dead. Ice cage gone. I was like, really? Really? So yeah, he got me good. Uh, sideboard, a couple of times I had a circle of flame and a fireball. Um, the one time I used circle of flame, uh, my opponent had a token generator. And it never came up when the circle of flame was on board, but it did stop those three one hex proof wolves. Stop them dead in their tracks. Um, what else did I have hanging around from that? Had a couple of levitations that were just like last picks. Harbor Serpent, Flight, nothing spectacular there. Stave Off actually is not bad. Neither is the Elite Vanguard or the Fiery Hellhound, but you know, I just couldn't justify running any of that stuff. <clears throat> I mean, with Stave Off, for most of my creatures, Stave Off just basically sat there and said, yeah, um, it's dead anyway. You know? Uh, some black cards, uh, Hideous Visage, a Mind Rot, a Devouring Swarm. Devouring Swarm's a nice card to hate draft. <laughs> First pick, pack one, was like a Jade Mage. Didn't go green. But, you know, Jade Mage is scary. Jade Mage is really scary. Um... I've mentioned before in the cycle of mages, the red one is really the weak one. Haste is nice, but it only matters once. Um, Jade Mage is arguably the best one. Arguably. Alabaster is really nice. The black one's really nice. Um, the blue one is nice. Its activation cost is a little high, but drawing cards is always awesome. But that's a story for another day. Which I think I've already covered anyway. A Lawnmower Elf... A rampant growth, an arachnus web, a troll high. And I actually had solid green. I just felt that my stuff in other colors was more solid. Uh, from somewhere out of the prize pool, I picked up a grim lava mancer and a or storm forge. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm not 100% certain how many uh, of the uh, Lord of the Unreals I have, I might have more than a playset. If I have more than a playset, then I've got extras going ahead for our trade binder, you know what I mean? Shazam! So, I'm going to call this video done, throw it up on YouTube, and... Call it done. Call it done. And, uh... We'll get to Apocalypse tomorrow. That's right, folks. I'd say the apocalypse is tomorrow, but no, let's let's look at the copyright date on this. No, the apocalypse was 2001. There you go, folks. The apocalypse was 2001. We are 10 years post-apocalypse. So anyone who tells you the world's about to end and all that other fun, happy rot, it's like, no, the apocalypse was in 2001, dude. You're 10 years late to the party. All right. Be good, fellas.